Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Selling Toronto. I am your host Pete Lee and today we're going to be talking about a really really big topic and I keep getting this question a lot from people when I work with them or even just random people that come across me and they want to ask me what's really driving the Toronto real estate market and it's not what you think it is. So stay tuned for the full episode right after this. Let's go. My goodness, this is just absolutely beautiful here in Toronto. It's like it's like almost 20 degrees. You know, this is normally Canada goose, moose knuckle, macage type weather. Wow, this lady's wearing a t-shirt. Everyone's wearing t-shirts today. What's going on? So today what I'm gonna talk about is the big pink elephant that's sitting in the middle of the room. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what I think is truly, truly the strongest driving factor for why the Toronto real estate market is so strong. Sometimes people miss the most obvious answers, you know, it's like right under your nose. But there's a lot of people that seem to think there's a lot of, you know, foreign money, investors bringing millions of dollars from overseas, buying real estate and using it as a safe bank account. Now, I'm not gonna deny that fact because I work with a number of these types of clients, but it's not the driving factor, okay? Especially here in Toronto because that type of trend has been happening for a very long time, you know, since the mid 90s. So we're kind of used to it. That's not really, you know, that's not really a new thing. It's just that the world has become a lot more prosperous, especially in the East Asian countries uh, like China, where <laughs> there's just so many people and there's just so many millionaires and billionaires that are created almost every single day. You know, I'm definitely not going to ignore and stick my head in the sand and say that this is not a contributing factor to the strength of the housing market here in Toronto. Like the answer is quite simple. It's actually just one word. If we had to boil it down to why the Toronto market is so strong and it's a big D word, it's called demographics. It's demographics. Okay. And it doesn't really show up very often in the media circles or, you know, anything where you need to have a catchy headline. Like there's so much misinformation out there for the general consumer. And this is kind of why I created my channel to begin with, because I wanted to make sure that people had the right information so they would know the right course of action. But that has to be the biggest single driving factor that's causing the Toronto market to be this hot and in this in demand for properties. It makes total sense, right? You know, we have the largest segment being the baby boomers. Now, the baby boomers are the ones that are probably in their 50s and in their 60s today, and they own all these properties. And they're not really quite ready to retire or downsize yet. They're just, they're just not there. Uh, and then you've got the older people who are the seniors, you know, so probably your grandparents who still want to live in houses as well too. Now these people are the most old school of them all. They believe in owning land. They believe in owning a house. You know, try convincing a senior to go and live in a condominium where you have to share space and you can hear noise from your partying 19 year old neighbor. It's just not something that they feel comfortable with. You know, the seniors are the ones that are actually sort of holding on to their properties as long as they can. They're holding on to it because they have freedom, they have space, their grandchildren can come over. It only really comes to the point where when they can no longer maintain a property. So we're talking like, you know, they're ailing physically. They just can't do it anymore. It's just too much work to maintain the property. But I'm pretty sure, and I don't have the data to support this, but I'm quite certain that seniors are hanging on to their properties as long as possible. Okay, so then now we're talking about two other groups, the two youngest groups, the ones that, that need properties the most. And I'm gonna start with the millennials. So the millennials are the babies of the baby boomers. And they are the ones that are growing up now. They're in their 20s, they're in their uh, sort of early to mid 30s, and they're buying property because they're growing families, they, they have a somewhat stable employment now, and uh, a lot of them just actually just wanna get into the market before it becomes too late. And there just isn't enough freehold houses uh, for, to sort of go around across all four segments of the demographic spectrum. Okay, so now we're talking about the Gen Xers. They're the generation that is squeezed in between the baby boomers and the millennials. And they were the ones that actually benefited the most, to be honest with you. Like they were 
there at a time when properties were cheap they were there when you know condos first started coming out and they were already working they perhaps they had money saved up and they were able to get in the market and a lot of them were able to sort of double down and really really make a lot of money just buying and holding property or just buying property to live in the timing was just perfect for gen x so, but now that we have the millennials who are want to go out there and they want to go buy their own properties uh, it's becoming increasingly tough because you've got these three other major generations above them that are already holding property or they're competing against you with more money okay so that's what's really driving the market here in Toronto which is a tight supply you've got all these different uh, demographic groups that are already holding the property not really wanting or willing to sell it's just that there isn't enough supply just not enough people selling on mass and so um, I think that it's going to be a long-term trend. Uh, what we're seeing right now is certainly a very peak type environment. You know, that's why prices are just like skyrocketing like crazy. Uh, it's just at its at its hottest, hottest point. And so, uh, you know, when you have that many people, you know, demanding the same type of properties in the same types of locations, that's just naturally what's going to happen. You know, prices are just going to get bid up. It's just very, very constricted supply it explains a lot as to what's happening in the market. Stay calm guys, There's always gonna be options if you're willing to keep an open mind and to compromise and to listen to your agent, the ones who know what they're talking about. So if you have any questions or you want more clarification or you wanna plan and strategize your life a little bit more, you know, uh, in terms of where you should buy your property and what type of property you should buy, uh, then by all means, shoot me a message and uh, hopefully I can clarify the topic a little bit more and uh, give you some more insight as to what the best course of action is, uh, especially if we know that it's going to be a long-term trend. And uh, I hope this was useful to you. Uh, please be sure to subscribe or like my Facebook page. Uh, there's gonna be plenty, plenty more content to come, guys. I promise um, 2016 for me is, is going to be a big year. So I hope that you guys uh, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one, guys.